Trump v. Biden on immigration. Today, I'm going to discuss what has happened with both President Trump and Vice President Biden in the past. What have they accomplished or done over their careers on immigration? I'm going to share what they both say their plans are if they are elected for immigration going forward. 2020, 2021, 22, 23, so on. And I'm going to explain what has happened during this very long four years with President Trump. Look, I know I probably won't change the mind of anybody who's already set to decide to vote for either President Trump or for Vice President Biden. But as always, knowledge is power. I want you to make the most informed decision that you can. And if you can vote, and you have a family or loved ones who are immigrants, you should be aware how your vote might impact them. If you don't know, my name is Andres Mechel. I'm an immigration attorney here in the US, but more importantly, I'm an immigrant like most of you, my clients. I've gone through what most of my clients have experienced before I became a US citizen. I came to the US as a child and didn't speak English. I moved to Israel as an adult and didn't speak Hebrew. I came back to the US alone and without family and only $300 in my pocket. When I was younger and we first came to the US, my family lived without legal status for many years, almost a decade in fact. I almost lost my green card and I had to make my way through the confusing and frustrating system of US immigration without an attorney. My parents did hire an immigration attorney in the 80s who took $5,000 of their hard earned money in the 80s and did absolutely nothing. My goal is that for you, my audience and my clients, that that never happens to you. If you are eligible for legal status, we will do everything we can to help you get that. And if we can't help you, we're not going to take your money. Okay, so let's move to tonight's topic. Trump v. Biden in U.S. immigration. First, back in the summer of 2016, I explained what Donald Trump said he would do if he elected. He said he would deport everyone. He said he would roll back protections for immigrants. And he said he would build a wall to keep illegal immigrants out and Mexico would pay for it. That sounds fantastic. Remember those days? Now let's talk about his campaign promises. First, Trump said he would deport everyone. It wouldn't surprise you to learn that he has not. He has not, in fact, deported everyone. He's deported less people than Obama did during this same first four year period. Even though he has repeatedly said he would deport everyone, he has not even come close. During the first two years of his administration, there were increased deportations of both people with criminal backgrounds and those without any criminal background at all. Deportation numbers under President Trump are lower than they were the first two years of President Obama's presidency. So four years under Trump, less than two years of President Obama. He has had some of the largest workplace raids in more than 10 years. Expedited removal proceedings, that's a faster way to deport immigrants by not having a hearing in front of an immigration judge if they can't prove they've been in the country over two years. So expedited removal proceedings are going forward. That will be a fundamental change when it's applied. Despite the number of deportations not being everyone, as President claimed it would be, the way ICE officials, DHS leaders, and this administration have acted and talked about immigrants, there is an increased fear throughout the US and throughout immigrant families in the US and outside its borders. Did he roll back protections for immigrants? I did a video recently about TPS, temporary protective status, and how that is ending in January 2021, only a couple months away. This summer, I made several videos about international student visas 
being revoked. We also talked about DACA holders without criminal backgrounds facing deportation. To add to that, the Trump administration, despite being told they could not end DACA by the U.S. Supreme Court, is refusing to allow any new DACA applications to be accepted at USCIS. There's litigation about that. That's going to be resolved. Uh, but the fact is, he's done nothing for DACA holders. Trump said he will set up a program for DREAMers, but to date, nothing has been produced to back up these statements. Everyone is aware of the inhumane treatment of families at the borders, families being ripped apart and held in cages at holding facilities. Some families are still separated today, despite the administration stating it would end the practice in June of 2019. Trump also expanded Department of Homeland Security's reach to the entire U.S. when demanding papers from people who they believe are undocumented. Now, before, they could only focus on within 100 miles of the border. Now they're going anywhere in the U.S. Trump has withdrawn from human rights groups from within the United Nations. The number of refugees, which was 80,000 under Obama, is now less than 18,000 18, a year. And as he leaves allowed in the U.S. has decreased dramatically under President Trump. He started the Remain in Mexico program, which causes asylum seekers to remain in Mexico or return to countries such as Guatemala, Panama, Nicaragua, and others while attempting to gain asylum to the U.S. Asylum policies have been changed to increase the time for obtaining work authorization, meaning it takes longer to get work authorization, and now they're charging fees for the application, or they're trying to do. He's also had the Justice Department narrow the scope of asylum protections so that victims of domestic violence can no longer apply for asylum. That's what he's trying to do. Narrow asylum every step of the way. Since COVID-19, asylum and refugee acceptance has stopped almost completely in the U.S. But hey, did he build the wall? Well, part of it was built. So unsurprisingly to most, Mexico did not in fact pay for any of the wall. What did surprise people is that the Supreme Court allowed this administration to move funds from military spending to fund the wall. Interestingly, and recently, several of Trump's acquaintances, including Steve Bannon, who was in charge of his campaign in 2016, were indicted for embezzling funds from a charity they set up to help build the wall. In June 2020, it was reported that 260 miles of wall were built since Trump took office. U.S. Customs now say, it says it's 307 miles. But reality is only three miles of the wall at that time was new construction, where no barriers had existed before. The rest were shoring up current walls or replacing existing walls. As of September 2020, since Trump took office, five miles of new walls have been built. And the only one paying for it are the U.S. taxpayer. Trump also said repeatedly that his senior policy advisor, a documented white supremacist, Stephen Miller, that he wants to move to a merit-based immigration. Since the 1960s, U.S. immigration has been based on the idea that reuniting and unifying families is the goal. Obviously, this is not the goal for the Trump administration. He and his cronies have said since before the election, they think the U.S. should move to a merit-based immigration. This means they would allow people in who have more money, better education, or some other measurable monetary value over those who have family ties in the U.S. One of the biggest changes the Trump administration has instituted is the public charge application. Let me rephrase that. One of the biggest changes to legal immigration that this administration has done is the change to the public charge application. Now, I've made five or six videos about this subject. To review, public charge is not new. It has always been a requirement since the 1880s that an immigrant can support themselves in order to legally immigrate to the U.S. However, the Trump administration decided to write down and explain what those requirements would be. They have set up a waiting point system, which is very subjective, that's going to look at the money someone makes, their family size, their age, their health, their education, and a number of other factors to determine if they are eligible to get a green card in the U.S. Although Trump claims to want a merit-based system, he has effectively stopped all employment visas from being processed 
at least through the end of this year, blaming coronavirus. One of the biggest changes this administration has put into place, which is on hold right now due to court injunctions, is increased fees for immigrants. This is the second time that they've increased filing fees since Trump has taken power. Now, I've created several videos on this topic when I reviewed the changes. We'll get a link to those comments below. What you need to know is that they are substantial and clearly are another way for this administration to limit immigration any way it can. Sadly, the president has also been working against cities within the U.S. to deter immigration. He has these ongoing feuds with what he calls sanctuary cities. Now, sanctuary cities, as they're used, are cities that have said they will not turn over information about immigrants' legal status or the lack thereof to ICE under some circumstances. Those circumstances differ city to city, state to state. Trump has tried to withhold funds from these cities in a recent decision that he lost the administration was refusing to give New York residents fast passes for airplane travel. He has also started labeling cities with higher Democratic support as out of control, and he sent in national troops, many of which were compromised of DHS or ICE workers. Where do they stand now? Let's first go to Trump's immigration platform. Build more of the wall. End chain migration and the green card lottery, the diversity visa lottery. So chain migration is when a person sponsors their family, say parents and siblings, to get legal status in the US. It is called chain migration because it is said that the people who have lived together, chained together in one place, often move together to a new place. So son that becomes a lawful permanent resident then files for parents. Parents then file for other kids. That's the idea. Trump wants a merit-based immigration system. He wants to severely restrict or end asylum in the U.S. That's that's Trump's plan. Now, what does this all mean for you, the immigrant? I've always stated that our law firm is 100% behind legal immigration. We think that every person should have the right to immigrate to the U.S. and be with their family or come to work here as long as they meet certain criteria to do so. What will happen if Trump gets elected or re-elected? Trump's proposed policies haven't really changed. He's saying today what he was saying four years ago. If he is elected, things will probably continue to get much worse for immigrants. I mean, just look at the courts, it's a disaster. There's more than a million backlog and growing. Trump may or may not have a Republican Senate, but he most certainly will have a conservative Supreme Court. This administration has shown repeatedly that they will do whatever they want, whether it is against the law or a, a direct contradiction of court orders. They will not allow anything to get in their way. They just don't care. That means that immigrants will lose more rights. Immigration will fundamentally change as it has today. It will be more expensive. There will be fewer visas and fewer ways to enter the U.S. Mm -hmm. And processing times will increase, meaning it'll be more expensive, there'll be less opportunities, and it's going to take longer. Voting takes place on Tuesday, November 3rd. Early voting is open in many states, including being able to get a mail-in ballot. I myself have already voted. I already mailed in my ballot. If you are a citizen, you have the right to vote. If you're not a U.S. citizen, please don't vote. <laughs> it's going to be lot, lots of bad consequences to you. We encourage everyone that can vote, let your voice be, be heard, go out and vote. Thanks for your time. If you enjoyed this video, please let us know by subscribing to and following our social media channels. If you need assistance with immigration issues, we are here to help. We won't take your money if we can't help you. So reach out to us today and we'll see if we can get you started on your immigration journey. Until next time, stay healthy and be well.